All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Gurong Pinoy. Hello po sa lahat ng members ng Team Bruner. Again, our Team Bruner babies are those who will be taking the LEP in March 2023, of course, under the new TOS. And of course, pinaghahandaan natin lahat yung ating licensure exam for teachers in March. No? So that's going to be um, in March 2023. We have the new TOS. All of the items that we are discussing tonight are, of course, based on the competencies of your new TOS as well as sa inyong majorship. Ganun din po. Now, we have just opened our um, second section, no? your section B for Team Bruner. Again, open na po yung ating section B. Section A is already currently closed. And so, if you'd want to still become a member and join us so that you can be alagang Gurung Pinoy, no? under sa Gurung Pinoy, magpa-member na po kayo. Just send us a message or our Facebook page. If you are watching us on our Facebook page right now, just send us a message and mag-PM lamang po kayo sa ating Facebook page so that you can easily download all our files. You can join us tuloy-tuloy na pag-watch na ng ating full-length video. You can answer our quizzes. Then of course, you can also join us for our pre-board, for our final coaching and you can also take a look at our classified files. Okay, so again Team Bruner is now open Section B and limited lamang, lamang po yung ating slots na. So habol na po kayo paunahan na lamang po ng ating slots for Team Bruner Section B. Now now, for our majorship, again, we're also offering majorship for Filipino, MAPE, Social Science, TLE, and AFA, English, Math, and General Science. And again, your Saturday schedule, you have the following majorship, Filipino, MAPE, SOCSI, and TLE, AFA. For Sunday naman, we have English, Math, and Science. Na? So this coming weekend, we are already going to be answering your diagnostic test. Those who are in our group, no, meron po kayong sariling Facebook groups, of course, I will be posting our sample answer sheet. Po, pwede niyo pong i-download para po makapag-practice tayo ng ating shading. No? So come Saturday for the following majorship na nandyan po sa inyong screen for Saturday, I will be posting your diagnostic test by 7 a.m. And you can answer it continuously. No? Po, pwede nyo pong tapusin until um, the day that you start to discuss it, the following Saturday pa po. No? So again, magpamember na po kayo sa ating majorship. Just send a message to our Facebook page. And of course, English Math Science naman are going to have their diagnostic test by Sunday of this weekend. Okay, so again, your answer sheet sheet is going to be made available. You can easily just download that, have it printed, make a lot of copies so that you can practice shading. Okay? As we all know, kailang kailangan ding maroon kayo mag-shade so that you can pass your lead. Okay? So again, for our majorship, we have your, we have had your orientation. There's diagnostic test. There's five discussion. Then of course, you will have the pre-board, your final coaching. No? So that's until the weekend prior to you taking the lead. So again, sulit na sulit po ang pagiging member ng Gurung Pinoy. Mag-send lamang po kayo ng message sa ating Facebook page. Now tonight, we are discussing general education. Again, this is under the new TOS. But of course, let us all start with our opening prayer. So sumahan niyo po ako mga kaguro. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. All right. Now, once again, this is general education under the new TOS. Please do like, love, share our video. Very important that you are sharing our video so that we can reach out to more uh, people, no? those who will be taking the let in March 2023. And of course, you can also show your support by sending us starts on Facebook, Super Chat, Super Stickers naman po, dyan sa ating YouTube channel. Now, if you can see the captions sa ating video, you can easily just click the three dots and turn off the captions. If your video is blurry, po pwede nyo din pong ayusin yung ating video quality, okay? So, again, please do like, love na po, and of course, share our video. Thank you so much for all those 
who have already started a watch party for all those who've already tagged their friends. Thank you so much. Again, please do like, love, share our videos, start a watch party, tag your friends, send us stars on Facebook, super chat, super stickers naman sa ating YouTube channel. We start with question number one for Gen Ed. Number one, English. Philippine, American, and Italian are examples of blank. Letter A, verb. Letter B, noun. Letter C, adjective. Or letter D, adverb. Okay, what is our choice for number one? Question number one, what is our choice? Again, Tim Bruner, babies, pake participate po, no? ilagay po yung ating answer dyan sa ating comment box. And of course, let's all have fun as we learn tonight. Again, okay lang maligwa, basta importante na tututo. And so sa bawat pagkakamali, ilagay ligwa, yehey, natuto ako, and move on kaagad, kagaya ng inyong relationship. Move on kaagad. Okay, wag pong magpakamartir. Okay, number one, the question is very easy. Elementary ito, no? alam na alam natin ito. Number one, Philippine, American, and Italian are examples of letter A, verb, letter B, noun, letter C, adjective, or letter D, adverb. The correct choice here, of course, would be, uh-huh, the correct choice would be letter C, adjective. Adjective po yung ating hinahanap. Medyo marami maligwak. It's a very common, very simple question no, under your um, under English, okay? So, letter C, adjective, yung ating hinahanap for question number one. Now, remember, this is part of your parts of speech, okay? So, isa siya sa parte ng inyong uh, speech, no? Sa eight parts of speech. So, the first one, of course, would be the noun. Your noun is used to name people, objects, or ideas, even your animals, even your events, your holidays. Those are some examples of your noun. So, in this case right here, your example is adnan is an intelligent young man. Adnan, in this case, is a proper noun. It's a, a person's name, no specific person. And of course, man is a common noun, okay? Now, pronoun, ito po yung naghahalili sa ating noun. No? So a pronoun is used in place of a noun. Example would be, I have built a house. So I there would take the place of the name of a person, or specifically you as a person, because you are talking to yourself. The first person, I, me, they, them. Um, these are some examples. No, we, us, these are some examples of your pronoun. Okay? So again, sa Filipino nga pala, no? although uh, sa English, ay, uh, tayo po ay nosebleed, sa Filipino, nakaka-nosebleed din. No? So, yung noun po, in Filipino, this would be your pangalan. Okay? Pangalan. Okay? So, your pronoun, on the other hand, ito po ay panghalip. Okay? Because it, it takes the place of your noun. Ha, sa halip na gumamit ka ng, ng inyong pangalan, pwede mo gamitin yung inyong panghalip. Okay? Now, the third one here would be your adverb. Okay? So, pangabay ito sa inyong uh, Filipino refers to a word that describes a verb, an adjective, and another adverb. Okay, so example, I am going now. No, kailan ka uh, lalakad? Okay, so now it, it describes a verb, an adjective, and another adverb. Okay, now next one, you have your adjective. Ito yung ating hinahanap kanina. An adjective is used to describe or qualify a noun. Okay, so example, she is a pretty child. So in this case right there, she is an American. No? She is an American. Her citizenship is American, for example, because uh, of course your choices here would be Philippine, American, and Italian. No? Anong klase sila? That would be your adjective. No? Anong, uh, anong yung kanilang citizenship? So, under po siya sa adjective. Some of you are uh, saying it might be a noun, pero hindi po. No? So, adjective po yung ating tumpak na choice dito. Origin. Okay? Tama po yan, Sir Melvin Barrientos. Origin. They classify your noun. So, uh, adjective yung ating tumpak na choice. Pang-uri in Filipino. Now, yung preposition, of course, this pertains to your position about, around, of, with, okay? So, ito yung inyong preposition. No? Then, you, of course, you have your verb. That's pandiwa in Filipino. It describes an action. But not all verbs, uh, not all verb is an action word. No? Some verbs can be your linking verb. Your am um, is are, your was word. These are also considered verbs, but they are not 
uh, describing your actions. Okay, so not all types of verbs are action words. You also have your modals or what you call your helping verbs. Your will, would, can, could, shall, should, did, do, does. Okay, so um, modals po sila, your auxiliary verb. Then of course, you have your conjunction. Ito yung pangatnig in Filipino. Uh, it's used to join words or group of words to one another. For example, and, o, or, so, other, neither, or so, uh, after, sorry, and neither, neither, nor, uh, either, or. Okay, so that's your conjunction. Interjection, this is used to express some sudden rush of feeling or excitement. For example, alas, we have lost uh, the match. Or your when you say, ouch, okay, sakit. Aray, aragoy in um, hiligay non or awit no usong usong ngayon. Awit, move on. That would be your interjection. Okay. Now there is another part of speech na wala dito, and that would be your your article. Okay. So article your your a, your n, and your the. These are articles. Okay. So these are the different parts of speech. So then again, your your answer there would be adjective. Okay. So adjective. What is the origin of this person? What is the citizenship of this person? Okay, so adjective, origin, that would be the correct choice for question number one. Akala ko number one, lahat tumpak. Okay, akala ko lang pala, pero okay lang po yan, at least tayo yung natututo. And so move on na po tayo, the correct choice is adjective. Next time, we all know what will be the correct choice. We move on with question number two. Okay, ang salitang bana ay halimbawa ng anong antas ng wika. Letter A, sosyolet. Letter B, pabalbal. Letter C, lalawiganin. Or letter D, idyolek. What is our choice? Agoy, ligwakta, sabi ni Ma'am Aileen May. Tama po. Nasabit sa Philippines, sabi ni Sir Glester. Okay, letter C for number two. I see a lot of letter Cs. Tumpa kaya ang letter C. Again, please do participate, no? even if you are just watching us on YouTube. Sa YouTube po, para kayo ay makapag-comment, uh, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel if this is the first time that you're watching us. Uh, consider subscribing. There's so many videos there that can help you pass the let. Over 500 videos, almost 600 videos na po tayo. And of course, sa atin namang Facebook, so that you can leave a comment, make sure that you are following our Facebook page. Okay, letter C for number two. Okay, the correct choice, ang salitang bana ay halimbawa ng anong antas ng wika. The correct choice would be letter C, lalawiganin. Okay, so tumpak po yung lalawiganin. No? Meron iba sa inyong hindi nyo alam, pero letter C po ang ating tumpak na choice. Bakit? Dahil ang bana ay salitang hiligay nun para sa asawang lalaki. Okay, so uh, in Iloilo, we call our husbands bana. Okay, so ang bana ko ay si Sir Migs, for example. And yung asawang babae naman ay sawa, no? Sawa. So sana all may bana, di ba? You wish, meron din kayong bana, meron din kayong sawa. Okay, so bana ay asawang lalaki in hiligay nun. Okay, so letter C, lalawiganin ang ating tumpak na choice. Sometimes you call this pang lalawigan, okay? Ah, sa Cebu din pala, bana rin yung inyong... Um, tawag na no? so parehas. All right, now what about the rest of your choices? No, so socialic. Ito ay ayon sa antas ng lipunan. When you hear people talking, you sometimes would know that they are konyo. No, meron silang konyo speak. Medyo pasosyal na speak usually. Eh, um, magkahalo na no? taglish. No, magkahalo yung English at yung Filipino or English at Tagalog ng ating mga konyo. Meron din namang jejemon. Okay, yung jejemon mo. Alam na alam mo din yung kanila mga uh, ginagamit ng words. Yung pabalbal dito, this is the lowest na form ng wika, no? lowest na antas ng wika, pangkalye. Uh, for example, erpat, ermat, no? parak. These are examples of uh, words under pabalbal. And of course, letter D mo naman, yung inyong idyolek, uh, ito ay kakaibang estilo ng pagsasalita. And so, if you are listening for, um, you're listening on the radio, for example, and you hear someone say, excuse me po, no, with matching ubo-ubo, alam nyo na kung sino yan, no, that's Mike Enriquez. If you hear someone say, magandang gabi bayan, 
automatic, automatic, alam nyo na kung sino siya. No? Meron siyang kakaibang estilo ng pagsasalita, maaring sa boses, maaring sa expression. Okay? So, for example, yung ligwak, yung tumpak natin, ito ay something na idulik na sa atin, no? medyo uh, unique sa gurong Pinoy out of all the, the online review centers, okay? online review programs. Okay? So, maganda gabi ba yan, for example, or if you hear Chris Aquino laughing, then you'd know that that is Chris Aquino if you hear Tony Gonzaga singing, then you can actually say na, ah, si Tony yan, alam na alam mo yung kanyang boses. Okay? So that would be your idulek. Idulek. But of course, the correct choice here, sana all may bana, that would be lalawigan yan for number two. We move on with question number three. Okay, this is social science. During the Spanish period, this refers to the privilege of the provincial governor to engage in trade. Would this be letter A, Alcadias, letter B, Alcalde Mayor, letter C, Indulto de Comercio, or letter D, Corregimientos? Okay, what is our choice for number three? <laughs> Ayan, ang yabang, no? Ang yabang niyo sa number one ngayon, naligot sa number one. Okay lang na at least natuto. All right, again, please do not forget po to share our video. Para mas marami tayong ma-reach, mas marami tayong matulungan. And of course, pakitag na din ng inyong mga friends. Okay? At ganun din, o pakishare po sa inyong wall if you can. Or maybe start a watch party para yung mga marites niyong friends, mga marites niyong neighbors ay makakita din ng ating video. Uh, Ma'am Kai Kai Ku, hintayin lang po natin. Ang sabi ni Ma'am Kai Kai Ku, hindi pa siya na-approve sa major. Pakihintay lamang po. No? Um, si admin ay magre-reply. Okay, later, maaaring kumakain si admin. Okay, number three, I see a lot of letters C's kasi may commerce, sabi ni Sir Jaime. Okay, so again, this refers to the privilege of the provincial governor to engage in trade. And you are right, no? your um, line of thought is correct. That would be letter C, indulto di de comercio. Okay, so this one right here is the right to participate in the galleon trade because um, during the Spanish period, the the public officials were saying na kukonti yung kanilang sahod, no? but they actually are enjo enjoying a lot of privileges. At isa nga dyan yung indulto de comercio. Kung pwede silang mag-participate sa galleon trade. Okay, so that's the correct choice. Let us see indulto de comercio for number three. Now let's take a look at the uh, government structure during the Spanish period. Okay, so here the leader, no, the main leader would be the king of Spain. Okay, and uh, under him, you have the colonial government, you have the executive branch and the judicial branch. Okay, so itakal muna natin yung executive branch at yung judicial branch. Your executive branch, this is headed by your, gover your governor general. So kumbaga, yung presidente natin ngayon, governor general during the Spanish period, no, directang uh, ruled siya by the king of Spain. You also have your judicial branch, your royal audencia. Ito yung pinaka-supreme court nila. No? You also have your residencia, your lower courts, and as well as your governor general, uh, pupwede din siyang uh, mag-rule ng law, no? or uh, pupwede magsabi whether the law is right or not. Now, under the colonial government still, you have the provincial government. Okay, provincial government, this is your alcaldia headed by your alcalde mayor. Okay, so kumbaga yung uh, governor natin ngayon, your provincial governor natin, those are called or those were called alcalde mayor before. Under your provincial government or your alcaldia, you have the pueblos or towns and they are headed by your gobernador silio. Okay, gobernador silio, these are the town mayors right now, no? And of course, you have the barrios headed by your cabeza de barangay your barangay captains, okay? You also have your municipal government or your corregimiento, okay? And this is headed by your corregidor. Now, for your city government, you have your ayuntamiento. You call that your ayuntamiento. And this is headed by your cabildo, okay? So your cabildo, this actually is your city council. You have your alcalde, that's right, the, the mayor. You have your regidores, your um, councilors, no? Then you have your aguacil or alguacil mayor. That's your PNP chief, no? Yung police chief. 
sa sa uh, city na yan. Then of course you have the escribando. Escribando, your scribes. So these are the secretaries. And under that, you also have your barrio still ruled by your cabeza de barangay. Okay. And so the correct choice here still would be your uh, for the previous item natin was and dulto de comercio. The rest of these were um, positions in government. Okay, we move on with question number four. Ang pangarap ay isang pangalang patlang. Letter A, basal. Letter B, tahas. Letter C, pantangi. Or letter D, palansa. What is our choice for question number four? Number four, again, share po ng ating video. And of course, please uh, make sure that you have liked our video. And if you can, join us in Team Brunner. Okay, number four, I see a lot of letter A's. Tumpa kaya ang letter A? Or sama-sama kayang uh, sisigaw na naman ng awit yung ating mga kaguro. Okay, 4A, ang pangarap ay isang pangalang patlang. The correct choice would be letter A, basal. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng basal? No? Tingnan natin yung iba't ibang uri ng ating pangalan. Remember, pangalan is a noun in Filipino. Okay, now unang-una, you have your pangalang pantangi or pangalang tiyak. This is your proper noun. Okay, so proper, it belongs to a specific person, place, object, your specific uh, holiday, for example, when you say Michelle R. Ortiz. Now, Michelle, that is an example of a proper noun. No? Si Ma Michelle, hello po. Now, yung pangalang pambalana naman ay also known as your pangalang ditiyak. These are your common nouns. No? So, uh, guro, this is an example of your pangalang pambalana. Bulaklak, that's pangalang pambalana. Rose would be, would be your pangalang pantangi. No? Pantangi, although usually we don't start right the rose with a capital letter okay um for example country that's an example na bansa example po siya ng pangalang pambalana pilipinas is an example of pangalang pantangi okay now your pangalang tahas is also known as pangalang konkreto these are your concrete nouns yung ating mga nahahawakan na pipisil ayan mahilig kayong mamisil Okay, uh, nadidilaan, nakakain, okay, concrete, konkreto, pangalang tahas, okay? So, these are your concrete nouns. For example, mansanas, mesa, pintuan, okay, tao, okay? So, konkreto, nakikita, nahawakan, napipisil, nahihimas, alright? Now, yung inyo namang pangalang basal ay also known as pangalang di konkreto. These are your abstract nouns. Ito yung mga hindi natin napipisil. Of course, no, hindi natin nakikita. So, concepts, concepto, like your values, these are pangalang basal. So, pangalap here is isang pangalang basal, okay? Hindi siya konkreto. Now, palansak naman, this would be your collective nouns. For example, grupo, pamilya, uh, team, okay? So, these are your collective, collective nouns. School of fish, no? That's a uh, uh, collective noun. And so, the correct choice, again, would be letter A, Basal is an abstract noun or isang di konkretong pangalan. Okay, so letter A, basal, is the correct choice. We go to question number five. Anong antas ng wika ang salitang jahe? Letter A, jargon. Letter B, pidgin. Letter C, colloquial. Or letter D, balbal. Mm -hmm. What is our choice? Number five. Okay, number five, what is our choice? Okay, I see a lot of letter Ds. Jahe. Nakaka-jahe naman. Jahe naman pre. Okay, or jahe naman marsh. Or jahe naman moms. Okay. What is our choice for salitang jahe? Okay, anong antas ng wika ang salitang jahe? The correct choice, of course, would be letter D. That's balbal, no, pangkalye. So your colloquial term for this would be nakakaya, no, hiya. That's jahe. Okay, now what about the rest of your choices? Again, when you say jargon, ito ay wikang eksklusibo sa isang grupo o profesyon. So sometimes, 
ang mga tao na labas sa grupo ito or labas sa profesyon na ito ay hindi nakakaintindi. For example, yung ang inyong mga abogado kapag sila ay nag-uusap-usap at meron silang mga sarili nilang uh, words, no? hindi tayo nakakaintinding mga hindi abogado. Ganon din sa doktor or ganon din sa ating mga nurses. Okay? Um, maaring yung mga yung mga, luma, ng mga naglalaro ng mobile games, no? may mga uh, meron din silang jargon na hindi din natin maintindi dihan minsan ng tatanong ako anong ibig sabihin niya no anong ibig sabihin ng ganitong term sa mobile legend, uh, legends for example okay now what about pidgin okay yung pidgin naman ay isang wika na walang formal na estruktura ginagamit ito ng dalawang individual na nag-uusap na may dalawa ring magkaibang wika umaasa lang sila sa mga makeshift na salita o pansamantalang wika. Kung baga eh, para siyang improvised na wika. Kunwari eh, pumunta ka ng Japan, pumunta ka ng Korea, yung inyong nakausap ay hindi marunong mag-English, ikaw naman hindi marunong mag-Korean or hindi ka marunong mag-Japanese in Japan. So, uh, makeshift yung inyong wika. No? Kung baga eh, parang tomato, no? parang barok yung inyong pag-uusap. And so, some examples of this would be ikaw aral mabuti para ikaw kuha taas grado para namang in check okay mag-aral ka ng mabuti upang mataas ang iyong grado suki ikaw bili akin ako bigay discount okay so suki bumili ka ng na ng palinda ko bibigyan kita ng discount o so maaring hindi mara, hindi masyadong Um, matatas, magtagalog yung ating Chinese na businessman dito. At tayo din naman, hindi marunong mag-insect. No? So, meron tayong makeshift na, na wika that would be pigeon. Or, ako kita, ganda babae. Okay? So, barok nga. No? Si Tarzan, ito yung ating uh, pigeon. Nakakita ako ng magandang babae. And minsan, parang uh, ginagamit mo rin ito kapag ka ikaw ay nagpapabebe sa iyong jowa, di ba? Pero um, again, that's the meaning of the term pidgin. No? Hindi kayo magkatulad ng uh, wika at gumagamit lamang kayo ng, um, ng makeshift, no? panandali ang wika and of course, um, improvised na wika. No? Yung mga Arabo ba, pag naniningil, ganito da. No? Yung mga Bumbay, no? pag naniningil, ganito. Okay, now, your colloquial, this is the antas ng wika na ginagamit sa karaniwang usapan at ginagamit sa pang-araw-araw na pakikipag-usap. Okay, so, mas formal siya kesa sa iyong balbal. So, sabi natin kanina, jahe would be balbal, hiya would be colloquial. Okay, so, mas common siya kesa sa inyong balbal, ginagamit siya sa pang-araw-araw. Okay, and so, uh, the correct choice would be letter D, balbal. We go to question number six. Ayan, ang inyong paborito. Number six, Peter borrowed 15,000 from the bank at the rate of 12,000 per year. How much did he owe the bank after 18 months? Would it be letter A, 18,700, letter B, 17,700, letter C, 16,000, or letter D, 17,000? Okay, what is our choice for question number six? Ayan na si Math, yung inyong paborito. Okay, again, paki-share po ng ating video. Maraming salamat, especially sa mga nag-start uh, ng watch party. Thank you po. Thank you so much. And of course, kung maaari, no, magpa-member po kayo sa Team Bruner para kayo po ay maalagaan ng gulong Pinoy. Okay, letter B for number 6. Letter B. So sabi dito si Peter ay nag-loan, no? Nag-loan si Peter ng 15,000 galing sa banko at the rate of 12% per year or per annum, okay? If you don't see per year, that would be per annum or po pwede nyo din namang makita yung term na annually, per year pa rin po yan. How much did he owe the bank after 18 months? Okay, so how much did he owe the bank after 18 months? Okay, so again, remember for your simple interest, your formula would be P R T, where P here would be the principal. Ito po yung, uh, yung original amount na kanyang binaro. Rate would be the one with your percentage. Okay, your percentage sign, that would be the rate. And now, uh, sa rate po natin, kapag ka tayo ay nag-solve, we need to convert this into its decimal form. No? So very easy lang naman. If you convert this, you simply drop your percentage sign and move the decimal point two times to the left. Okay, so two times to the left lamang. And T here would be time in years. Napaka-importante that you know na yung time mo dito would be in years. So that 
means yung 18 months natin dito, we need to convert this into into years pa, no? Instead of just putting 18. You cannot multiply 18 here, no? Dapat eh, convert mo muna siya into years. So again, interest would be equal to principal times rate times time, okay? And so the total amount that he owes after 18 months would be the principal, okay? So of course, yung original amount plus the interest, which is PRT. Okay, so that would be 15,000, the principal, plus 15,000, your principal, times 0 0.12. Saan galing yung 0 0.12? Siya po ay nanggaling dito sa ating 12%. This is your rate. So again, as I've mentioned, just drop the percentage sign and move the decimal point two times to the left. Times 1.5. Saan naman galing yung 1.5? Ito po ay galing sa ating 18 months. Remember, there are 12 months in a year and yung 18 months mo ay 1 year and 6 months. Diba? Because that's 12 plus 6. 12 plus 6. So that would be 1.5. 1 and a half years. Okay? So 1 and a half. That's why meron tayong 1.5. So you simply multiply all these, the ones in your parentheses, and you add that to your 15,000, you have total amount equals 15,000 plus 2,700. 2,700 would be the product of these numbers right here, okay? And so the correct choice would be letter B, 17,700 for number 6, okay? It's okay, no? Kung hindi nyo pa ito nag-gets, paulit-ulit po tayo magkakaroon ng ganitong items. I'm pretty sure once you take the let, you'd already be confident in answering questions such as this, okay? So, letter B, 17,700, ang tumpak na choice for number 6. Okay, we move on with question number 7. Okay, this is science. Of the following organisms listed below, which one will likely survive in the tundra biome? Letter A, rice bird. Letter B, walrus. Letter C, frog. Or letter D, turtle. Okay, what is our choice? Choice for number seven. Uh, Sir RG, may tanong si Sir RG, no? This is uh, regarding our 18 months kanina, Sir RG. Sir RG, trade dapat. Hindi daw po ba 1.6? Hindi po because we divided 18 by 12, okay? So if you divide 18 by 12, you would have 1.5, okay? 1.5, that's one year, 12 months, plus 6 months, which is half of your 12 months, okay? So 1.5 po. Yung inyong magiging decimal there instead of uh, 1.6. Okay, 7. Okay, I see a lot of letter Bs for question number seven. Okay, this is also a very common question, no? Very common question din po ito. Of the following organisms listed below, which one will likely survive in the tundra? So, unang una, tingnan natin kung ano yung tundra. Okay, so the correct choice here, of course, would be your walrus. Nandiyan na pala yung answer na no? walrus. Letter B, ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay, so tundra is a vast, flat, treeless Arctic region of Europe, Asia, and North America in which the subsoil is permanently frozen. Lumalabasin po ito sa left ang term na permafrost. This is the permanently frozen layer of soil sa inyong tundra. Okay, so tundra pa ice na siya, no? Ice siya. It is found in the Arctic region. So permafrost, ito yung tawag sa subsoil which is permanently permanently frozen all throughout the year. Kaya kukonti lamang yung kanyang vegetation, kukonti lamang yung plants sa ating tundra. No? It's flat, it's vast, and it's treeless. Kasi wala masyadong nutrients, of course, kasi yung subsoil niya is frozen all throughout the year. Okay, so the correct choice again would be walrus. The mustached and long-tusked walrus is most often found near the Arctic Circle, lying on the ice with hundreds of companions. Okay, so this right here is your walrus. It, of course, can survive in your Arctic environment because of its fats. Okay, so meron siyang uh, insulator, no? Hindi siya masyado nilalamig because, of course, very fatty ang inyong walrus. And so the correct choice would be letter B for number 7. We move on with number 8. Hello sa ating mga Team Piaget. Hello, Sir Jimmy Tapales. Nakakamiss ang boses niyo, ma'am, from Team Piaget. Hello, hello po again sa ating Team Piaget babies. Malapit na malapit na maging LPTs. Alright, number eight, math pa rin. 
the average of four numbers is 38. If three of the four numbers are 48, 36, and 24, what is the fourth number? Letter A, 41. Letter B, 44. Letter C, 40. Or letter D, 42. What is our choice? Okay, what is our choice for number eight? Number eight. Hello sa lahat ng mga nanonood sa atin sa Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Good evening po sa inyong lahat. Okay, number 8, ICBs. Letter B for question number 8. Okay, so again, number 8 here, you have the average of 4 numbers being 38. And 3 of the 4 numbers are given as 48, 36, and 24. What is the 4th number? Okay, makinig, tingnan na ating screen. Remember that, that if you are solving for the average, you use the formula of average equals the sum of all numbers divided by n, not the number. Okay, the number of items that you have. So if you have this, your average is 38. And your sum, you have to add 48 plus 36 plus 24 plus X. Ito yung hinahanap natin number, no? And of course, after adding all these and getting its sum or their sum, you have to divide that by 4 because you have 4 items here, no? You have 4 numbers, no? So if you have uh, 3 items, this would be divided by 3. If you have 5 items, of course, that would be divided by 5. Now, this right here is the long method. Pero dito po sa Guru Pinoy, of course, we are teaching you the tricks and we have a shortcut method, no? Meron tayong shortcut method, shorter method of solving this. Now, makinig, tingnan ang ating screen. We use the shorter method which is minus plus plus. Makinig, okay? Huwag muna magsulat, huwag muna makichika. Yung minus plus plus, unang-una, what you do is you minus these numbers from your average, okay? So, minus nyo po ang numbers na ito. From your average, so say you have 38 minus 48, no, 38 minus 48, that would be equal to negative 10, ne negative 10. Then you have 38 minus 36, and that would be equal to 2. 38 minus 24, that would be equal to 14, okay? So equal to 14, that's the first step. Minus, okay? Subtract all the numbers from your average. Now, next step is plus. What you do is you add up all these numbers from left to right, or in this case, from top to the bottom, okay? So add up all these numbers. You have negative 10 plus 2, that would give you negative 8, plus 14, which would give you 6, okay? So that's the next step plus or add up all the numbers. Now, the last plus here, this means you add whatever is the sum to your average, okay? So add your sum to your average. That would be 38 plus 6, and that would give you the answer of 44. Letter B is our correct choice, okay? So minus, plus, plus. Again, first, you subtract or you minus your items, no, those individual numbers from your average. After that, you add up all the sums from left to right or from top to bottom. Then after that, whatever is the sum left, you add that to your original average. And that's how you get your missing item, no, your missing number. That's minus plus plus. Now, if you'd want to... Uh, do this part right here or do this process now your long process natin po pwede din naman okay so you have 38 equals 48 plus 36 plus 24 plus x divided by 4 now this quantity divided by 4 and of course you can uh, multiply no? I multiply mo lamang itong 38 times 4 mo 4 times 38 equals 108 plus x. Saan ang galing 108? Nang galing po siya sa sum ng tatlong numbers na ito. Okay? So 108 plus x. So for you to get the value of x, you need to multiply this first. You know, yung 38 times 4 mo, and you subtract the sum of 108 from uh, the product. Okay? So 48 times 38, or 4 times 38, I mean, is 152 minus 108. The correct choice, again, would still be 44. Okay? So, ganun pa rin, no? Uh, if you don't want this method, uh, you know, to each his own, no? So, kanya-kanyang method sa, sa math. But here, again, I am going to teach you the short shorter method, the shortcut, no? Para mas mabilis yung ating pag-solve kahit na hindi tayo math major, kayang-kaya natin isolve. Okay? So, again, minus plus plus, the correct choice would be letter B, 44 for question number 8. 
we go to question number nine. A father decided that his 30 hectare land be divided among his three children using one is a two is a three partition. The oldest getting the biggest share. How much did the second child increase? Okay, letter A, 10 hectares, letter B, 8 hectares, letter C, 15 hectares, or letter D, 5 hectares. What is our choice? Number nine. Okay, number nine, I see a lot of letter A's. Ma'am Emily Nocido, good evening po. Uh, Ma'am Rezel Kilat, good evening po. Yung mga Team Piaché babies natin nakikinood ngayon. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Okay, basahin ko muna itong ating um, feedback from Ma'am Rezel Malakat Kilat. Hi, Ma'am Mek. I miss your voice, Team Piaché here, and I can say na worth it ang pagpapamember. Uh, kasi sa actual let examination last October, most of the items sa lumabas, especially sa Gen Ed lumabas. Okay, so again, magpamember po kayo sa Team Bruner if you can, para hindi po mahirapan sa Gen Ed, sa Prof Ed, and of course also join our membership sa ating major. Okay, I see a lot of letter A's. All right, now this is an example of your partitive uh, proportion. No? So partitive proportion, makinig na, tingnan yung ating screen. Okay, so you have uh, tatay, at yung tatay naman ay merong 30 hectares of land. Meron siyang tatlong kids, no? And uh, gusto niyang gamitin yung partition na 1 is to 2 is to 3, no? Medyo uh, unfair yung tatay, hindi pantay-pantay yung pagkakadivide ng, uh, ng kanyang hectares of land, okay? So what we do here is we get the total number. And we divide that by the total ratio. Makinig ha, makinig po. Total number here would be this number, you know, so 30 hectare, that's 30 hectare. And your total ratio would be 6. Bakit 6? You simply add up all these uh, partitions here, you know, or all these parts here. So 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3, that would give you 6. So 30, that's your total number, divided by 6, your total ratio, that is going to give you 5. Okay, so 5 po. Um, um, kada parte. Okay? So, kada parte, five yung makukuha. Now, in this type of question, be very careful no, kung ano po yung uh, hinahanap. Okay? So, sabi dito, the oldest is going to get the biggest share. So, that means yung three would be for the oldest. Yung question is, how much did the second child increase? No, medyo may problema lamang tayo dito. Maaring receive ang uh, question, uh, yung, yung word na, na um, dapat eh nakita natin dito. Now, sa let po, actual let, ay marami pong um, typo, no? marami pong uh, typo error, so wag po kayo magugulat. Okay, so how much did the second child receive? No? So that means ito yung ating hinahanap kasi three would be for the eldest, two would be for the second child, and one would be for the youngest. Okay, so each part is five, so that means you simply would multiply for the second child. No, you would multiply five, that's each part, by two because dalawang parte yung kanya, no, that's for the second child. And so the correct choice would be letter A, 10 hectares. Okay, so 10 hectares, letter A, ang ating tumpak na choice. If you are looking for the biggest share, no, kung ang question mo is about the eldest, that would be five times three, so magiging 15 yung inyong choice. No, but if you are asked for the youngest share, that would be five. 5 times 1, your answer would be letter D, 5. Okay? So, pero sabi dito is how much did the second child? The second child po yung hinahanap. And so, your choice would be letter A, 10. Okay? Letter A, 10 po yung ating, ating hinahanap. Okay. So, the correct choice here would be letter A for number 9. We go to question number 10. Okay? Kawawa yung youngest. Tama po, no? Okay, number 10, still math. After receiving 30% discount, Jay paid 210 pesos for an item. What is the regular price of the item? Letter A, 380 pesos. Letter B, 400 pesos. Letter C, 350 pesos. Or letter D, 300 pesos. Okay, what is our choice for number 10? Good evening, Sir Mike Echo, Team Piaché Baby. Okay, again, sa ating mga Team Piaché members, good evening po sa inyong lahat. Again, share po ng ating video. 
Okay, number 10, D. I see a lot of letter Ds for question number 10. All right, so again, for number 10 here, sabi ng inyong number 10, no, after receiving 30% discount, Jay paid 210 for an item. Okay, now remember, your discount was 30%. So that means yung binayaran ni Jay ay... 70%, diba? Because 210 should be 70%. Bakit 70%? Dahil nagka-discount siya ng 30%, 100% minus 30% would be 70%. And so, your 210 here would be 70% of the regular price, okay? And so, you can just write 70% of the original price or of the original price is 210. Now, in math, of is multiply and is po is equals okay so that would just be equal to your 0 0.7 or 0 0.70 drop the percentage sign and move the decimal point two times to your left now so that 0 0.7 or 0 0.70 x okay because this would be of no multiply equals that's the term is equals 210 and so to get the value of x we simply have to divide both sides by 0 0.7 the correct choice would be 210 divided by 0 0.7 that would give you letter d 300 for question number 10 okay so letter d 300 ang ating tumpak na choice for number 10 we move on with question number 11. The fourth-year high school students were told not to visit the Enchanted Kingdom before graduation, but they blank on what they wanted, letter, uh, or which verb tense will best fit if the writer wants to create the effect of emphasis. Letter A, simple past, insisted. Letter B, past perfect, had, ins uh, had insisted dapat yan, no? Sorry, letter C, past progressive, were insisting. Or letter D, emphatic past, did insist. Okay, what is our choice for number 11? Okay, number 11, what would be your choice? All right, 